Hi, I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about settling in to a new normal. So as I wrote, sat down to write this post this weekend, we're entering week six of our shelter in place or quarantine vacation or whatever it is you want to call this time. It appears that we have at least this week and next week to go before anything's going to change. And while I would love to be free again, I'm willing to hang in there a bit longer if it will help confirm that there is not a resurgence of this nastiness. Now, it's interesting to me to watch my newsfeed on Facebook and to see the different positions that people take about all of this. As I wrote this, I saw a post from a mom of an Im immunocompromised infant who was struggling with people not staying home and the increased risk that brought to her child. You know, I get her concern. And honestly, I'm not sure I would feel any different in her situation. But on the other hand, I saw a post from a mom of an immunocompromised teen who looks at this as just another opportunity to make sure she's doing everything she can to protect her child, just like every other day. She doesn't expect the world to modify what they do because her son is immunocompromised, unless they come into her home. There, she maintains control and makes sure that her son is safe and protected as much as she can. Yesterday, I saw posts about protests here in Las Vegas because people want to go back to work. They're struggling financially and they want to provide for their families. Again, I understand where they're coming from and I want that for them as well. But as I watch from a distance away, as my sister struggles in her fourth week of trying to recover from COVID-19 and I see her have another setback this weekend, I find myself wanting people to more fully grasp just how serious this can be and why staying home and flattening the curve is so important. So this week, we continue with our regular routine, or at least our new regular routine. Checking calls for AJ, schoolwork for Sean, work for my husband, I'm going to be working more on my business. We have AJ's annual IEP meeting on Friday, and it'll be virtual this year, which again, I'm kind of glad to see, but that'll be something new. I'm hoping to set up a couple other online meetups with friends to discuss some at least semi-work related things and a chance to catch up with friends. Sean and I have a few emails we need to get sent out and a few things to look into as we continue trying to figure out how to get some more college visits in. Again, another week of kind of our same old, same old. Now at the same time, Sean and I are noticing that we're reacting faster and or stronger to things than we normally do. It's easier to get mad at something stupid. We don't have the patience with minor inconveniences that we usually do. Now, fortunately, it hasn't had a major impact on our relationships and outbursts have been at a minimum, but it's definitely taking more effort on my part and I suspect on the part of my other family members as well. Which got me thinking, and I realized that AJ may well have the most balanced perspective of anyone. Now, while he knows that we're sheltering in place because of COVID-19, he also seems nearly unaffected by it. AJ knows that his aunt has it and is still recovering. He knows that he can blame a lot of these changes and a lot of things on the coronavirus, as he calls it. But he doesn't appear to be overly concerned about it. AJ also realizes that a lot of businesses have closed down and the workers are now working from home, including the creators of his simulator games that he talks about all the time. But he simply acknowledges all of that as fact. Yeah, I know. A lot of it is because of his mental impairment, and that keeps him from fully understanding all that is happening in the world. And I'm not totally disappointed by that. But there are times that I find myself wishing that I could look at life just as simply as he does. You know, take changes in stride. Modify as needed. Continue playing games and watching videos just like always. Not a lot changes as long as your basic needs are met. So as I begin thinking about what I want to take away from this forced change in plans, a few things come to mind. First, appreciate good health. Now, as I watch my sister continue to struggle to recover from COVID-19, I'm once again grateful for my good health. Yeah, I have aches and pains that I would love to figure out and try and get rid of. But overall, my family and I are healthy and active. There isn't much that we're not able to do because of health concerns. Many, many, many families are not able to say that. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Two, appreciate time together. I'm grateful that our family is close and enjoys time together. I've realized all over again how short our time with Sean is, and potentially how short our time with AJ is as well. Before I blink too many more times, they'll both have moved out of the house and begun their, their lives away from us. Now, while I'm excited for them and the paths that they're currently on, I'm reminded that evenings together watching TV, having in-depth conversations, and so many other things occurring regularly 
are coming to a close. I'm grateful for this extra time that we've had forced on us over the past few weeks. Finally, appreciate the ability to work from home. You know, I'm grateful that I was able to actually create an office space for myself in our home earlier this fall. I've wanted this kind of space for a while, um, especially since I know there are times when I need to be available to my family and still get some work done. While the kitchen table is effective, I knew that having my own space would help me to get more done in less time. So a friend graciously helped me put an office together this fall. It's definitely been broken in now, and I'm so grateful to have it. But I'm also grateful that I found a job that provides me with the flexibility to work around it, or to work the work around the needs of my family. So many families would love to have this option, and I'm blessed that I figured out how to make it work. And I'm grateful that I've been able to continue working on building this business during this shutdown time. I'm proud that I faced one of my fears and opened a Facebook group. You can find that at Facebook on Facebook um, under Haven of Hope for Me Community Group, or you can go to the blog at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This was originally posted in April of 2020, and there's a link to the Facebook group there in the post. I'd love to have your assistance in creating a community that encourages and supports one another along our journeys. So my question for you this week is this. What will you keep from your modifications when life starts up again? I'd love to hear about it. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. Once again, that's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in April of 2020. As always, I'd appreciate it if you'd share this with anybody you think would find it helpful. I'd love to help as many families as I can. Sign up lists are available over on the website. Signing up lets you know about all newly released content as soon as it's available. I'm so grateful for these lessons that I've learned and I'm trying to figure out um, what to keep over the next coming months so that I can continue to say that life is good and there is never a dull moment. <laughs>